Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Recover and Rise. Uh, it's lovely to see you all again and um, hope everybody's well. I'm just going to share my screen with you if I may very quickly um, and let you know what we've got going on today. Um, so here we are, we're in our sixth uh, webinar of the series, Getting Online. Um, we're followed by Creative Bloom who are doing a series on customers and marketing and then systems and productivity and growth and expansion. So if you haven't booked for those yet, please do. Um, today, we're talking about visitor economy businesses, and we've got three absolutely brilliant speakers for you today. Joe Williams from Experience West Sussex is going to um, give some tips on how to get some funding. And uh, Mardi Roberts from Ridgeview has got an absolutely great digital story to tell. And then Mike Humphrey from Digibubble is going to be talking to us about how we can get the most out of TripAdvisor. We've also got, we jump, um, so we're not here Thursday, so we jump through to next week, which is our end of series networking session. So I hope some of you will come along to that. And we've got representatives from Coast to Capital, Lowcase, the Business Hot House and Rise, along with all of our digital champions coming to talk to you. Um, about how you can access all the grants and funding and the support that we've been talking about in our session. So I'll just stop that for a moment. I know some of you are new to Remo um, and we will be having a networking, a short networking session at the end of this session. So if you just hold on until the end of the session, um, Bradley from Network My Club will go through how the networking works. Um, but while we're in presentation mode and once the speakers um, are talking, um, you won't be able to move around the room, but you can pop questions into the Q&A and then we'll pick those up and we'll carry on with those throughout the presentations. So may I ask um, Joe, Joe Williams, um, if you'd like to come onto the screen with me and um, start the ball rolling for us. Are you there, Joe? You just pop your camera and your yep. mic on. There we go. Can you see? Perfect. Me? Perfect. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. I'll, Thank um, you I'll, I'll go off and I'll leave you to share your screen. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining me today. Um, I'm just give me one second while I my screen and then we'll get cracking. Uh, okay. Hopefully you can um, see that because I can't see on my screen what's happening. Um, just to give you an introduction, my name is Jo Williams and I head up Experience West Sussex, which is really the central voice for tourism across the county. Um, we're core funded by the local authorities, but we have private sector voices feeding into what we do. Um, but that's a good old fashioned tourism board if you want um, a better, better, more colloquial expression for what we do. Um, so on the screen, you'll see we do all sorts of things from sector transformation, including digital transformation, really um, providing the tools that the destination needs to be future-proofed. Um, and we do all sorts of things for industry leadership, business support, lobbying. We do marketing through the experience where Sussex.com, um, product development and working with partners and stakeholder engagement. So um, what I've done is just put a few slides together, but I'm not gonna just talk at them. Um, but here you'll see the value of the visitor economy in 2019, pre-COVID, um, where it was basically delivering 38,000 jobs and over 2 billion to the West Sussex economy. So really, really important. Um, we do know obviously there's been a massive decline and we're working hard on recovery that we hope to see of similar levels probably in a couple of years, um, obviously all things dependent. Now today I know you're all here about digital and digital transformation. So just a very, very quick overview. Why, why should we bother? Well, as anyone who knows who's done a, a trip recently, your mobile is everything. Um, that's really the way forward now. It's not about mobile penetration anymore. It's, it's an essential. So mobile in terms of booking, uh, users using it for reviews, for experience engagement, um, finding transport. It's every part of the customer journey. So getting um, businesses involved in those elements and different parts of the customer journey, journey is really essential. Um, the other thing to say is like, like anything with digital, and I've been working in tourism for about the last 30 years, 
and digital's been in the conversation, but that what's really held true the whole time is it just rapidly evolves, um, both behaviours and the tech. So trying to keep on top of that is challenging, and that's hopefully what we're here to help you with. Um, there's all sorts of things going on, Internet of Things, obviously, everything now is kind of connected to the internet so how can the tourism sector look at those different linkages and work out how we can improve the destination your business offer and make things better for the customer um, one thing that's also rising is the sort of artificial intelligence and chatbots so that's the sort of thing if you go to the bank and you've got a little um, live chat box, either a person or it's artificial questions, um, but that's something that we'll see more and more of. Um, reviews, ratings, user-generated content is really, really important, and that really does help drive up the quality um, as well as sort of marketing, um, and it's not going to go away. And then sort of virtual reality, how can you embrace some of the, the use of technology in your customer experience. So just a really quick overview on some of the digital tourism data resources, and you will hopefully get all these presentations. I've put these with the links on, but some really excellent resources for overview of digital and tourism and what are the big trends, what are the insights. Um, Google, as you imagine, has got an amazing array of tools. They've got destination insights, hotel insights, um, and they've got in a fantastic free uh, skills training resource called Google Garage. And I'll talk a bit more about that later, but you'll see the link digital skills training. The other one that I would put you to is Visit England Business Hub. And um, there, that, as you would imagine, the National Sort of Tourism Development Agency has a whole host of research, data, toolkits training programs, webinars, and um, we we can sort of link and signpost you and remind you of a lot of things that are going on there. I know that um, Mike Clayton is talking about TripAdvisor, so I won't uh, go into that, but it's a really good source of data. Who people are going, timelines of what people are booking, and Expedia is the same. So do, do have a bit of time looking at those. So Experience with Sussex, how can we help you? Um, well, this year we're looking at digital adoption and we're, we're partnering with these webinars to specifically provide um, specific support for the tourism sector. Um, online bookability. We have a lot of businesses across West Sussex that still either aren't online, they might have a website or just a Facebook page, but they don't have true online bookability, which is where the consumer has a seamless journey on their phone from an advert to, right, I just want to book a ticket now, and they get a confirmation and it's all paid for. Um, there is um, a Visit Britain program that's linked up with TXGB, which is like a booking channel manager for both accommodation and attractions. And um, they've basically just released with the government support for the sector for the next six months, where you might have seen it about the national lottery. If people buy a national lottery ticket, they can then go to the Visit Britain shop and exchange that one pound sort of or whatever it is, one pound, two pound lottery ticket for a 25 pound value voucher for um, tourism attractions to try and get people to travel over uh, the winter. And TXGB is the, the sort of booking channel manager behind that. So, so it's really um, quite a good one to look at for getting into Visit Britain support. Um, other areas of industry support that we do is sustainability and obviously the race to net zero, of which we'll hear loads more about. But tech is also a way to to support that through your measurement of your emissions, to managing your teams, to reporting um, through research. So tech plays a whole sort of important part about that. I touched on experience creation earlier on, and that is um, Mardi and I, and, and, and on our table chat, we were talking about blacksmiths and sword making and, and how can people find that? And, and that's the whole part of it. You know, we, we want to try and help businesses that maybe have got a traditional offer, but how do we now engage them to make more immersive creations that consumers are interested in and want to do? It's a sort of consumer trend. 
Um, other things that we do are networking. We're hopefully doing a sort of West Sussex big tourism day out in March um, at a venue yet to be decided, but we'll let you know more about that. And that's a chance where we'll do more of this type of activity, but hopefully in person as well as um, hybrid events, which is the new way of working. Um, and we also on our website, and there's the link at the top there uh, for toolkits and signposting. You can email us at any time um, with the get involved email. If you are new to Experience West Sussex, do get in touch. We have free um, marketing opportunities for you. They're all 100% subsidised and we're hopefully getting funding over for the next two years so we can carry on um, doing this work. We do all sorts of uh, content marketing through social blogs, website listings, um, send us your images. Uh, we also have a Shop Sussex on our site, which we set up last Christmas when everyone was not traveling, but we still wanted, um, this was our pivot to a bit more digital, where we wanted to say to people, buy, you know, for Christmas, support your local um, tourism attractions and buy gift vouchers or buy local wine or deliveries or experiences that people can do online. So we, we did a bit of an online pivot. So have a look at Shop Sussex. Sussex and please if you're not listed and you think it's you know you meet the criteria do get involved and um, so all sorts of things going on our autumn winter themes are listed there get outside sort of sparkling Sussex around food and drink um, all the amazing light shows festive events um, Sussex bonfires dark skies autumn colour and um, anything really to drive people to come to our patch over autumn winter and also stay the night, which is really important. Um, so just some top marketing headlines from ours and you can again have a look. We're still fairly new. We sort of set this up about two, three years ago. So we're still growing, but we've had an amazing growth and um, we have delivering over 60,000 business leads to all our tourism partners. So again, please do engage with us because that's all free leads for yourselves. Um, so really, I just wanna say enjoy today. I want to hand over to Mardi and the attractions who really are, um, can give you a fantastic best case, uh, best practice and case studies of what they've actually been doing. I will be on the chat and I will be on the networking tables. Um, but do engage with us. We're here to support you um, through sort of strategic destination development down to helping signpost you to contacts that you, may, you might need or, um, you know, some advice or research. So these, the um, emails are there. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. So I'll just stop sharing. Uh, you just and stop sharing your screen joe but just stay on for for one minute if you don't mind yeah sure i'm just there we go um i just wanted to ask actually me i i had a question i was really interested to hear about this lottery ticket i hadn't heard about this so you go and buy a lottery ticket and then what do you do i was interested in that yeah, so I don't think it's been launched to the public yet. Um, I think they're still getting it all set up. Mm -hmm. So, but essentially the, the, the premise is you buy a lottery ticket, you then go to the Visit Britain shop on virtual mm -hmm. shop. And I presume um, with the help of TXGB and the booking manager, uh, the booking system, there'll be a whole uh, shop window of attractions all around the country that you can mm. say, right, I want to buy a ticket for, um, Amberley Museum, for example, yeah. who's on today. Um, now, I, I don't know if the full details, but I'm sure yeah. you either have to pay if it's above £25, but that the voucher, you know, mm -hmm. gives you that amount. So there, there will be a big marketing promotion yeah. um, to consumers um, about that. But it's it, for us, we want to try and get all our attractions yeah. who need the business yeah. and are open over the winter to be on the TXGB mm. system mm. to enable them to access the support being given by the government. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. How, as a visitor attraction, do you get onto that? Is that a case of contacting yourselves? You know, if you if yes, you have and a, I'll put a yeah. link when we uh, when Marty's chatting. I'll put a link in the chat. Brilliant. Okay, and just one little question there: um, Can visitor businesses get help with getting online and, and setting up online booking? Do they come to you for that? Is that is there sort of 
support? Is there funding? Is there anything to sort of help people set up that online booking? Yeah, so we will have some sessions in the next few months on specifically on advice and, mm -hmm. and where to go and who to talk to. There is quite a few um, business support programs going on in West Sussex that can do all sorts of things from there is general business support. Yeah. So from yeah, funding, peer-to-peer yeah, yeah. -peer reviews, um, mm -hmm. startups, online, there are some grants out there um, okay. as well. So uh, yeah. again, I'll put a whole load of links in the chat and uh, I'll also put some on my slides. So when, when yeah. you guys send the slide deck out, um, we can add those as well. But no, I'll, I'll do the, the yeah. links for all of those when we finish chatting. That would be brilliant because obviously there's quite a lot of funding opportunities and grant opportunities being mentioned through this programme. So it'd be really good to see whether we can particularly signpost anywhere if, if someone is, you know, does want to get on online with their booking um, yeah. and get that set up. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. Um, no, thank you and, very much. And as Joe said, her slides will be sent out after the session. So if you just like to pop your camera and your mic off, thank you. And um, I'd like to introduce Mardi, Mardi Roberts from Ridgeview Wine Estate, who has got a lovely story to tell us about their digital adoption. Over to you, Mardi. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'll just get my presentation sorted and we will start. OK. Um, right. Hopefully we can all see that. Um, so I, as, as with Joe, I'll just be reading off the screen and hopefully um, let me know if there's any problems. But yeah, my name is Mardi Roberts. I'm the Director of Communications at Ridgeview, um, which is our family company producing English sparkling wine. And I'm just going to talk to you about what we had to do and just some lessons that we learned really during the pandemic and then as we've kind of opened up again as well. Um, just in case people aren't aware of what we do or where we are. So um, that kind of you can see from the heart where we are and also where we get our name. We've got a gorgeous view as well. Um, so we are producers of English sparkling wine. We're a family company that began 25 years ago. And we were one of the first in England to solely focus on producing sparkling using Chardonnay Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier. In our 25 year journey, um, we have been awarded lots of different accolades and seen such a revolution, you know, on the, on the coattails of our success and um, many other English sparkling wines. Originally, we started at 25,000 bottles. We're now producing around half a million bottles and selling all around the world. We've had lots to celebrate, including being um, named International Wine Maker of the Year in 2018. Um, our wines now exported around the world and served at some lovely prestigious occasions. So there's been lots and lots to celebrate in our industry. Um, England's now producing, you know, we're no longer a niche cottage industry. We are now a serious contender in the wine world. Um, we're producing around about 10 to 15 million bottles a year. Um, but actually, when we look at it, the, the British consume uh, so we've said here uh, 1.8 billion bottles of wine a year. So we're still less than 1% of the wine drank in England. So we feel there's lots of potential and lots of um, lots of things to go, which is good because we are rapidly expanding. There's now over 7,000 wineries employing 5,000 people in our sector. And there's been at least sort of 70% growth in the last five years. And tourism is becoming so, so important to that growth. That was just to put it in a bit of context. Um, today we're here to talk about our pandemic journey and, and what we did. So where we were in 2019, we're about to celebrate Ridgeview's 25th anniversary. We've got our logo, things exciting, planning parties, opening a new winery, launching a new wine. Um, we always have to think in five-year business plans because whatever we do from, say, this year's harvest, we're not going to be selling it for three years' time. So we have to have strong, so solid uh, business plans. And we had a healthy sales mix of people buying direct to us, coming to Ridgeview, enjoying the facilities, um, off trade, which is what we call the uh, um, supermarkets, on trade is the restaurants and exports. So a really healthy sales mix. And then overnight in, in March 2020, although we did have some warning, lockdown hits. Um, and overnight, we lost 50% of our sales opportunities with all of the restaurant closing, which was a major arm of our business, export virtually closing those opportunities, and also our cellar door having to close as well so we were like everybody had to um hold our breath and you know and then pivot as we all say so i'll tell you kind of what we had to do 
Um, so this is in response um, to sort of immediate lockdown overnight. We really strong leadership. We're a family company led by my sister-in-law, our CEO, and it was to not panic that we needed to support our team. We had to make the most, as I'm sure many other businesses, of government schemes, furlough. When you lose half of your sales opportunities, um, it wasn't practical for us to keep our sales team on. So we had to scale back everything. We had to close, um, clear message of safety to everybody. But at the heart of what we did, um, you know, Tam was really kind of steadying the ship and making sure that our company values of still being pioneering, keeping quality at the heart and, um, you know, our passion remained. And also without being an ethical and sustainable company as well, our principles remained. So what could we do? We had about half the team left or even less. Um, we had to use those words that everyone's probably sick of, being pivot and agile and thinking outside the box. But also whilst being sensitive to the times, um, you know, we are a celebratory product, so we had to be really sensitive to our audience. And what we had to do, we realised that we had to maximise digital as one of our only arms. So focus on our web sales and then also focus on supporting our supermarket sales. So this is just an idea of some of the activations that we did when we were in full lockdown, because from a virtually non-existent, we weren't really selling much online um, and we knew that we had to work really, really hard. So it was all about content, engaging with our audience, being authentic and honest, but, you know, not overtly salesy as well. We wanted to keep that kind of storytelling going. Overnight, we focused on service. We offered free home delivery. Being a small, a small family company, we could sit and make decisions really, really quickly. We were also conscious of um, our place within the community as well and really feeling for our hospitality partners. So immediately in, in first lockdown, two pounds per bottle was donated to hospitality in action, totaling over the year of 6K that we were able to, to, to support that. But then we also really wanted to support our audience and to kind of keep them along for the journey series of blogs of what to do in, in, in lockdown. And um, we also did a series of really fun sort of Zoom videos as well. And we changed our message, as I said, kind of like reading the room, you know, no longer our central message and theme at Ridgeview was life is for celebrating. And during lockdown, it didn't feel so appropriate. So we changed our celebration message. And it was all about, you know, asking people to, to bring celebration home and to celebrate the small things. Um, but also, you know, keeping our audience engaged, we, we did a series of, of paid adverts but also competitions and people signing up and enjoying and being a part of the celebration and a, a few other things that we did as well just to keep the website moving was sort of flash sales and, and calls to action but hopefully all being sensitive to the times as well. We also had a, a growing wine club which was a natural thing for us to promote so that was something that we could grow and focus on and that meant that people had twice a year review delivered direct to their door. I'm going to hurry up because I know that um, my presentation, I tried to fit so much in and what we've been doing because um, it's been a busy couple of years, but I'll, I'll try and get through. A few of the other things that we did, this is all sort of mainly during lockdown and, and driving our digital, was digital collaborations, brand partnerships, maximising all of those seasonal occasions. So for Mother's Day, we realised that a lot of our audience were really into beauty and natural products. So we partnered with a beauty brand. We also had lots of Gin, um, we combined with some local gin producers as well to have cocktail home kits. On Father's Day, we had a pizza making kit. So it was more about just keeping that storytelling going, but making sure that it was an authentic, but also a reason for people to buy and celebrate at home. Um, with regards to the digital journey, people couldn't come to us. So we had um, created a behind the scenes tour of Ridgeview. And this was to celebrate English Wine Week. And we did a journey from vine to glass for people to come with us and celebrate. We also used that journey in when we did some virtual uh, corporate tastings and lockdowns as well. We were also lucky that we had, um, we collaborated just again, just thinking outside the box with a local Proc and Fitch, which was a DJ to do a sunset stream under the vines with lockdown no one there but we had 20,000 people watching um we were also fortunate it was filmed by pre-lockdown but Jamie and Jimmy on a Friday night feast had a, had a wonderful time at Ridgeview and it, it 
worked out in the end that it was during lockdown because it was in December um, 2020 that that went out and literally crashed our website overnight with sales. So that was a great success. And then when we could sort of reopen again, um, it was all about creating a safe space. Joe spoke about um, using digital. Digital was so important when we could open again and get our visitors back of having the systems in place. Um, so we created a new system under Resi for booking um, by using GoodTill and also the TXGB that Joe's mentioned as well. So when it was about getting visitor numbers back, we wanted to make sure that the journey was as easy for them as possible. Um, to come to Ridgeview in our Ridgeview Wine Garden and also collaborating with local produce to make it such a safe environment really focuses on the experience. Our visitor numbers have rocketed this year since we've been out and all about our wine tours. We literally can't put on enough tours because people are really over-indexing on those experiences, but also we're investing and making sure those experiences are great. So getting recommendations, working with our tour guides as well. I'm sorry, I didn't check for timing. Hopefully I'm doing okay. Um, so what were the results of everything that we did do in lockdown and maximising our di digital journey? I'm pleased to say in 2020, our web sales were up 280%. Um, so all of the hard work and all of the peddling underneath was worth it. So it was our record biggest um, website ever. So this does include our tours and, and, and people to review as well. And I'm also pleased to say that on the back of a record um, digital year on our website in 2021, our web our web sale or not ale, sorry, our web sales, I'll, I'll amend that, are up um, already 81% this year on, on a record year last year. So, you know, we couldn't be more pleased. Our mailing list as a part of doing a lot of the digital activation for competitions is up 275%. Our wine club up 75%. So all of the things that we wanted to do we could really really think about um, our social media growth with all of the engagement um, is you know we're indexing with record numbers I've just included Instagram there just because I feel that's one of the most important for us um, tools has record engagement levels and what we did was successfully change the sales mix from when we lost all of the restaurant and export to that direct to consumer and the off trade and also our visitor numbers changing our, our message to open for celebration we have had record visitor numbers and I'm really finding that people are, and I'm, I'm sure that um, everyone would, would um, join with this on this is embracing the outdoors a bit more and because we had to get a bit more hardy so people really are and also just wanting experiences we've been locked in for so long so the experiences of the wine tour has been going great and on the back of that we were really fortunate during lockdown to be called a Sussex success story and the virtual business awards and also family business of the year London southeast we were awarded best family business of the year recognizing our efforts so in summary, I just thought that I would um, just give a few of the lessons that what we learned and did digital in COVID about not panicking, reading the room, being sensitive to the times. As I said, we changed our life is for celebrating to bring celebration home. And then when we could open up again, it was that we are open for celebration. Um, it was not being overtly salesy all the time, engaging with your audience, but making sure that it's authentic and, and really about that storytelling. And as we all say, content is king. Um, we did a lot of rich uh, blogs, you know, telling people and storytelling also about when we could uh, about tourism, you know, what, what what is wine tourism and things like that. We really kind of delved into the blogs about that and listening to what your customers want. Uh, so as I explained, we use different channels for different audiences. I find Instagram is really about that sort of direct to consumer, whereas something like Twitter might be more of a, a B2B and, you know, with, with, with wine journalism as well. Uh, we at, at Ridgeview use inspiring images or we have a, have a wonderful, you know, we're quite lucky about that. So we have a monthly photographer coming in and that kind of keep the storytelling engaging. And then also collaborating, as Joe said, experience with Sussex, where Sussex have been so supportive of us. Also visit Brighton, Sussex Modern, lots of different organisations that if you put the time in, they will be really there to support you for that. Um, it's about working, collaborating with partnerships because that opens up new audiences, um, that collaboration. And also that our customers become our brand ambassadors. So on social to listen, to share and respond. And if you're engaging with them, they'll be more, more responsive to engage with you. Um, on top of this, um, we did have campaigns, you know, certain campaigns of advertising, 
uh, PPC and SEO um, programmatic and competitions that really, really did drive and really helped bring our engagement with with our audience. Um, the other thing that my sister-in-law Tamara always reminds me is to remain focused, that we can't do everything. Lots of opportunities come our way, but whatever you do, do it well. And, you know, those words are being agile, fle flexible and open-minded. Um, but most importantly, uh, you know, what I've always in the 20 years that I've been at Ruji, I've been fortunate to really enjoy and also have a fantastic team that, that really, really love what we do and supporting your team. So there we are. I'm not sure how I am. Um, That's brilliant. Absolutely okay. brilliant, Nadi. Thanks. Sorry, I did rush through just because no. I knew that there was lots in there. So much, to, so much. To, um, a couple of questions from the room. Um, would you have invested so heavily in digital had it not been for lockdown? Um, no, um, I think we, we had plans to in the future, definitely. Mm -hmm. But like everyone, you know, we're, we're just a small team. So it really did uh, fast forward. And we're continually now reviewing all the systems. And mm -hmm. it is something that we will be investing for in the future, including mm -hmm. a new website and things like that as well. It's so important to our future. So. Good to hear. And do you have, um, I mean, for, for a lot of our guests here, you know, they don't have huge marketing teams. Do you have a big marketing team or was it mostly done by well, yourself? <laughs> yeah in lockdown it was kind of me okay. <laughs> um, so um and then went with furlough um it was my and then when my marketing director came out of furlough so there was just the two of us mm. but we are fortunate since we have come out and you know we have our you know we're back on to record sales we've managed to double our team so there's four of us but yeah it's still quite lean yeah. um of yeah. what we do which is difficult because we're up against the might of the big champagne houses that aren't so lean. But, <laughs> but um, obviously it can be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lean and smart, done. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much for joining us. And again, Mardi mm -hmm. is going to stay around for our networking session. So if you've got more questions, then, um, you know, please have a chat then. Um, if you'd just like to um, stop your screen share and turn your camera and your mic off, that'd be lovely. Thank you. And if you could just uh, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, last but not least, I'd like to welcome Mike Humphrey um, back onto our screen from Digibubble. Mike joined us in the first two weeks of this programme um, and runs a digital agency. And Mike is just going to talk to us today, not just going to talk to us, but is going to talk to us today about getting noticed on TripAdvisor and how important it is to get noticed and what to do um, when you do get noticed. Thanks, Mike. Over to you. Cheers. Thanks, Cheryl. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so I've been invited to speak on how to get noticed on TripAdvisor. I'm a little bit of a background about who I am. I'm a local business owner. I own a full service digital agency called Digibubble. We support our clients online. Um, and a large part of that is we manage what we call third party connections for a cut for a clients into large scale platforms like like TripAdvisor, Booking.com, um, Eventbrite, uh, Google My Business. So we do quite a bit within TripAdvisor, in particular, trying to encourage footfall is a is a big one within TripAdvisor. So um, we've we've worked with TripAdvisor for the last six years or so. They um, they were originally founded in two thousand. Um, they are the market leading travel website globally with um, four hundred sixty three million monthly visitors on the website. Um, that's a culmination of 884 million global users. So these are accounts that they've got logged primarily in the States, but the UK is the second largest market. Um, they employ two, about 2,600 employees globally. Um, about 400 of those are based in London. So we've always got a good route into um, having support and working with clients to make sure that they're getting noticed. Um, and the, the website itself is worth 1.97 billion. So just almost half of what my company is worth, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, as I said, the UK is the largest sec is the second largest market. The US for them is absolutely huge. Um, but their focus for the coming months is to focus on the evolving markets within the UK and Europe. So if you are looking to drive activity and work with with encouraging footfall through TripAdvisor, it's a good time to go into TripAdvisor and talk with them and have that direct connection. Um, so fundamentally 70 77 percent of respondents um from a from a number of trip advisor survey 
um, have relied on on TripAdvisor reviews before they select a place to stay. So it's a real key player in the market in terms of what the decision process is for your end user. Um, and there is around 160 new reviews being published every, every minute on the website. So it's very important to make sure that your listing, your company, your your, your vineyard, whatever it happens to be, is present, is fresh, and is up to date on TripAdvisor because it is a constantly evolving machine. Um, there's, there's, it's quite easily you can quite easily fall down the ranks if you're not proactively trying to increase and climb on the on the on the platform. And you do that by providing TripAdvisor with the content, with the reviews, with the insight. So if it wasn't for the the business owners, if it wasn't for the customers, TripAdvisor wouldn't have any content on the site they retire entirely rely on user generated content um, and that's where they win if you give them what they require you will start to to rank very favorably um, so just having a look at there's two primary scores um, that you need to have a look at for what they call your your trip advisor rank as a business so your trip advisor um, rating is the written review that a guest will leave once they've stayed with you so these are based on a five-star system that we all have come to be very, very familiar with. Um, so that's almost like a user-generated rating. So from a customer's perspective, um, the TripAdvisor ranking is much like Google. It uses an algorithm to rank and um, and score your business based on a number of different parameters, your rating being one of them. So it's key to differentiate where you're getting ranked to make sure that you have a strategy against each one of these. So your TripAdvisor rating and your TripAdvisor ranking are separate, but still need to be considered in tandem. Um, so this index um, primarily determines how you rank against other properties on the site. So it's not that you can position yourself against searches. This is peer ranking. So um, TripAdvisor looks is, is your rank better than the person behind you? If it is, you'll appear higher. Um, so it's not a, a place where you can start to pay to appear higher. There are ad opportunities within TripAdvisor, but they're very well ranked, uh, very well labeled. Um, the key within TripAdvisor is to make sure that you're on top of where your peers are and where the competition is and start making some real um, some real adjustments to your listing. Um, there's three main areas that affect your ranking, and that is the freshness, the score, and the volume of your reviews um, within TripAdvisor. So we just have a quick look at those. Review freshness. So the older your review is, the less weight it carries. So the review score is it deteriorates. So they actually add attrition to your review. If it goes past six weeks, it drops drops a line. Three months is another score. The reviews after about a year start to play very little impact into your, your score. So you need to make sure that you've got that review freshness. Um, your review score um, this is fundamentally your overall rank. What out of five are you, are you getting? So it's key to ensure that every guest who passes through your venue leaves you a review. And there's quite a few ways you can encourage that, the most obvious being by asking asking them to do it. Although we've got a number of systems that we use where people come back. Once you've had a visit to come through, you have a, a thank you process. You you email them and say, thank you for visiting. Here's our review systems. We've got TripAdvisor. There might be Trustpilot. It might be reviews on your website or my business. But we actively work to try and have them encourage um, to leave you a review. We've also got a platform internally here at Digibubble that allows one person to leave one review. Um, but then that gets posted out to multiple platforms. So you you have that one review rather than asking your customer to come back and say, thank you. Can you do book, booking.com now? Can you do Google now? You do one review and it can post out to all of these platforms as long as your your website and the technology you've got can can manage it. We, we, we can we can look after that. And then looking at the review volume. So, yeah, this is our customer customer service and guest experience. So like many of us, we want to do right by our customers and we want to make sure that they're having an, a, a good experience. And what we want to do is utilize online surveys and questionnaires to find out exactly where you're going right and where you're going wrong. A lot, a lot of times more important to find out where you're going wrong. And then use these negative review points to pinpoint where you're going to work and where you're going to evolve your business to rectify these. And you start to 
improve your delivery and improve the offer and start really leaning on that customer feedback and that really makes a lot of difference um so a few um, tips and considerations uh, for TripAdvisor is be honest. Um, TripAdvisor is really strict on moderating the reviews that are coming in. So if they start seeing similar IP addresses, um, similar surnames coming from user accounts, accounts that have previously been reviewed, have reviewed you previously and have, there's a bit of a pattern, um, or there, there are, you can go on Fiverr, you can pay for reviews, you can do all sorts of stuff. If um, if TripAdvisor finds you, they can penalize your penalize you quite badly, um, not just in terms of where you rank on the site, but actually closing the account down. So TripAdvisor really is standing by the mantra that they're offering honest trip advice. Um, be authentic, as we see with many local businesses, is just be be yourself. Allow your personality, allow allow the, the genuine review process to to happen, and 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 don't hide. If you do have users who are negative or not reviewing, you don't just hide or ignore or, or put it through appeal to try and get it removed. Tackle it head on. Talk to them about it. Review and, and reply back to the comment to say that you're going to make improvements in your business. And then retrospectively go back and then start saying, you know, following the review, following the feedback from our customers, we made these changes to our business and look at the improvement in our rank that we've seen from that. So fundamentally, that's that's TripAdvisor. It's not it's not um, rocket science. There's not a lot of work behind it. There's a lot of it is a good, healthy portion of honesty and common sense, and you'll do quite well. And then, um, yeah, and that's me. So thank you, everyone. And that's uh, there's my details on the screen. If you if you do need any help um, with going through any of these third party connections, we're always happy to help. And uh, yeah, I'll take any questions. Brilliant. Thank you, Mike. You're absolutely sure. wealth of. Um of experience there. Um, just on the sort of um, TripAdvisor, on the people that leave reviews, I know I don't always, I know I get emails and it says leave a review here, leave a review there. Is there any sort of statistic in that, you know, say for example, if you have 10 visitors, how many will review? Is it a really a numbers game? You know, the more more people you can ask to review you, the more reviews you'll get. I th yeah, I th it is a numbers game and it also it varies. If, if you sit back and wait for the reviews to come, probably quite low 10 15 percent mm -hmm. if you're quite proactive with your customer base like we say we do a lot of thank you emails to say thank you for visiting you know we do a follow-up process we've got a lot of automated emails that go in with the sole intention of getting them to leave a review and then the people that do leave a review drop off of that list and then mm -hmm. we'll email them again in a month or two months time mm -hmm. and if that's not working we can start sending out coupons we can say okay well thank you for visiting you may not have left a review but we'd like to invite you back mm -hmm. um, let's have another trip have, an, have here's a 10 percent discount something like that so you can be quite calculated with how you can mm -hmm. increase that score so if it's important mm -hmm. to you um we use the visit account and the, the review percentage as as a benchmark for where we start to measure success we want to have at least 50 percent of your visitors leaving a review and engaging with the business after mm -hmm. they've visited and engaged with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just on the note of bad reviews, as you mentioned, um, it really is best to, um, to to comment back, isn't it? You really shouldn't just leave those there because I know some people sort of think, oh, we don't want to say this or we don't want to say that, but it really is best to have that conversation, isn't it? Yeah, because if you probably, if a good one comes in, you're jumping it. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Glad you enjoy our, <laughs> our virtual wine tour. It was really good to have you. Here's a voucher for a bottle of Lambrini. And um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really nice. And then you see a bad review, just radio mm -hmm. silence, and then a good mm -hmm. review. So it's like, actually, it, it, tackle the negative head on. I think it's always the way with yeah. communication. Yeah. It's the same issue that you have with family life, with clients, with staff, with anything. If you've got something that's bad, it's easy to ostrich and hide your head mm -hmm. in the sand. Yeah, but absolutely. Actually, the braver thing and the right thing to do is tackle it head on and try and resolve the customer issue. You'll probably have a much better time of it off the back of it. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. And again, Mike's going to be hanging around with us um, if you want to chat to Mike more. And I know you can answer questions on anything digital. There you go, Mike, can't you? I'll Pretty take much. That. Lovely. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. So um, just to sort of wrap up before we go into our networking session, if I can just share another screen with you, I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, our um, 
digital champions. We do have um, seven experts as part of this um, series, well, as part of the whole, um, the, all four series, that are looking at all sorts of different aspects of digital adoption. And any business that's attended any one of these workshops can access this free specialist support. And it's up to eight hours of free specialist support all you need to do is follow the website um, www.ctcbusiness.org.uk and um, Coast Capital will take you from there. They'll have a chat with you. They'll see what your issues are and they will put you in touch with the most relevant um, digital champion. So it could be creating content. It could be social media. It could be setting up online booking. It could be anything that you um, need for your business. So please don't um, forget to have a look at that because it's so very, very important. Um, I would like to, um, before we go, um, just quickly hand over to um, Bradley from Network My Club and he can just briefly talk to you about how we network and how the Remo platform works. Um, so, Brad, over to you. Yeah, hi, Cheryl. Hi, guys. Uh, very quickly, um, for those that are maybe joining for the first time in Remo, I'm just going to share my screen just for a quick um graphic of what you will be going into. So this is the Remo lounge, uh, the virtual lounge that you'll go back into. And just a couple of quick um, uh, pointers really uh, when it comes to using Remo. So when you go back into the room, you will be on a table. You just need to turn your camera and microphone on when you go back into the room. And then when you are there, you will only see and speak to the people that you are on a table with. Everyone appears as little circular icons. And if you want to move around onto the tables, all you need to do is double click on another table that has an empty seat and you will move there. So if you want to find some of the uh, digital champions and, and or some of the guys that have spoken today, uh, you can hover over the circular icon, see their names and then move to their table if there is uh, an empty seat. So you're very welcome to move around at your own pace. Um, I believe the, the room will be open for another half an hour or so. And uh, I know the guys that have spoken will be available to uh, take any questions. But if you need any help or need any support with Remo, uh, my colleague Nikita is here with, with me and we'll be uh, in the room. And, and uh, so just pop something in the chat box or, or come and find us on a help desk. So hopefully that's uh, nice and simple. Brilliant. Thank you, Bradley. So, yes, do hang out with us for another half an hour if you'd like to and um, come and chat with um, any of the experts that have spoken today. Um, and um, please don't forget to book for next week when we are going to be having speakers from all the different funding organisations um, so you can come along and have a chat with them and meet the digital champions and work out your next move. So all that remains for me to say is thank you again for joining us on behalf of Freedom Works, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Bye now. <laughs>